The Danish Inventor Advisory Service is a quintessential Danish program that we have been running for 42 years. It targets private citizens as inventors. So we see each and every individual in Denmark as a prospective inventor. We help these people, those citizens, with establishing grounds for saying, is this idea interesting? Is the idea uh, feasible? And uh, does it have a market potential? I think the greatest benefit of working with the mindset of the IAS is that it is distinctly practical. We try to have a focus on establishing a sort of a proof of business. So we go to the market and ask the market and we do that as quickly as possible because we need people to fail as quickly as possible. It is about failing fast in order to go back and refine the idea and then try again. Each year we meet and we screen and spa with 5,000 Danish citizens. Approximately 1,000 unique inventions are carved out from those 5,000 a year. So we screen a lot of inventions. Approximately 15 to 20 of the very best ideas, we manage to sell them on a license agreement to Danish or foreign companies. So we go from 5,000 to 1,000 unique inventions and then to 20 or 15 to 20 license agreements. The potential of this is huge. Um, the last impact assessment we did, uh, we took the 16 best inventions and we accumulated the turnover uh, of those inventions and we estimated the impact on uh, labor force and 2.76 billion Danish crowns were generated in turnover on these 16 uh, agreements and a thousand full-time equivalent jobs were created. We had the opportunity to do a presentation uh, at a conference for a Trinidadian um, delegation. And uh, I had the opportunity to tell them about this quintessentially Danish model targeting uh, inventors from, I mean, the general public and the value creation related to that. We have, uh, we have shown huge results over the last 42 years in Denmark. So that story was compelling for the Trinidadians because they don't have innovation initiatives targeting inventors or private inventors, citizens from the country. I think the first impressions from the Trinidadians were, wow, is there such a huge potential from working with ordinary citizens? I mean, people from the street, the value creation, the numbers that we have been able to, I mean, to create in turnover and, and job creation from Danish inventions, that was mind blowing. The way we plan to do an export or systems export to Trinidad was it was difficult because uh, becoming an inventor advisor is not an education you can't study for that it is just something that you can learn from doing it in a very practical sense so transferring that sort of tacit knowledge from Denmark all the experiences from Denmark and then transferring them or these two uh, Trinidadian consultants, that was a challenge. We invited people, local Trinidadian inventors in for sessions where we did inventor advisory in practice. And that was what we, we actually did for 20 days. We ended up moving way faster and, and much longer than I really expected, which was fantastic. I think one of the major contributions when working with inventors and working with this very practical mindset is that instead of taking the responsibility out of the hands of the, the inventor, we put the responsibility back in the hands of the inventor, advising people by actually giving them responsibility, it moves them. It gives them new capabilities that they will be able to use again and again and again, whether it is on their next invention or whether they have a job, they will be able to use that sort of uh, empowerment to create new ideas and create new solutions for the future. Export-wise, I think the Inventor Advisory Service approach can be adopted to pretty much any country. Um, the country needs to have citizens and companies. And then the Inventor Advisory Service will sort of operate between those two parties. We have learned a lot from kicking off that project and we are absolutely stunned by um, the uh, traction that we have achieved in Trinidad uh, very quickly. And we are hoping that um, other countries will 
go down that same road. And we are absolutely open for future collaboration with other countries. With this current group of inventors, they have been, um, I think, moving too long along a, a path that may not have been the best path. And so they are at a disadvantage in the sense that they believed that their idea was right. And it, some of them, I mean, as, as we've been trying to examine their value propositions more carefully, I'm realizing that some of them didn't really think out their value propositions very carefully. And I think with the information that we have gained, we will be in a better position to, to prevent those scenarios from happening in the future. And, and that's a real plus, that's a real advantage. One of the most important concepts is that proving a concept does not mean that your idea is feasible in a business sense. An idea is nothing. You could spend all the money in patenting and such, and then it would be just a waste of money and time and effort. But if they could establish and fail fast, they would not have wasted all the time and effort to go forward. And they could go into other ventures that were more meaningful and fruitful. I think it will cause an evolution of inventors in Trinidad and Tobago. I think we will move from, uh, I think somebody coming to us with an idea will recognize what it takes and we'll be in a much better position to tell them what it takes to realize an idea.